Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, today it's time for a uh, surprise video. Um, surprise because I was about as surprised that this happened um, as you're going to be. And this video is going to start off with a big box. A really big box. And uh, we're going to need something else. We're going to need some scissors to have a look what's inside. Just to give you a hint, this here came from Hong Kong. It's about five kilograms heavy. And um, it wasn't really easy to get a hold of because um, I did have some troubles, well, getting it delivered to me. But, apart from that, it's just a box. And it's one of those boxes that I've been waiting for for a really long time. Because this box is going to be a sequel to another project um, that I did some time ago. And uh, I was very, very much anticipating if this would go on and if um, if it went on if it would be good because this has so much potential now a little bit more information about this box it came from Hong Kong especially it came from Hobby King and uh, Hobby King contacted me and they told me they were going to send me one of these boxes and let's just go ahead and open it because I'm really, really, really giddy about this. This is going to be so cool. Anybody see it yet? Ooh, it's a box in a box with a picture of a box. But this here is a special box. This box contains a Fabricator Mini 2. From Turnigy. I did the review of the Fabricator Mini 1 and uh, the Fabricator Mini 1 was one of the few 3D printers that I really had fun with. It's not, it wasn't the best 3D printer but it was actually the one where I thought this is a super piece of machinery because it was cheap, it was simple and it just worked out. In fact, my Fabricator Mini, the version 1, is still working and I'm still using it. I'm still taking it with me wherever I go. So, let's start off with getting this out of the box. And uh, I have to actually say a big thanks to Hobby King. Um, I wasn't expecting... Okay, this is it. Now, I'll just do the unboxing video right away, and then I'm going to take some time to read into the manuals, set things up, get everything configured, and uh, we're gonna have a part two of this video, but let's unbox it first. Packing and packaging is good. Um, everything looks very solid. And it's kind of hard to get out too. So here we go. Right. Starting from the top, we have some filament. This is about, I would say, um, about 45 meters. Um, this is about the length that you should actually 
be able to do something with. Um, it's definitely enough to print uh, some calibration targets and to do the, the first setup. Um, many printers come with only about a meter or two, and sometimes even less. Um, if you get less than three or four meters, don't even bother to put the filament into the printer because it really makes no sense. Um, because you have to put some other filament in and then the temperatures won't be right. Uh, sometimes two different fil filaments won't mix and you'll have the nozzle clogging up and it's not worth the hassle. Um, the length in here is about enough um, to get started, to set the printer up. And um, you're going to go out and buy filament anyway. Um, so if you order this, make sure to get some filament too. Um, it says on here, PLA, 1.75 millimeters, 190 to 210 degrees Celsius. Um, that's pretty standard, but it's actually pretty cool that they put it on there. Um, a lot of others don't. You just get this little piece of filament and you're going to figure it out what you have to do. Now here's a small paper box. It includes a power cord, European plug, two pin connector, standard, a micro USB and USB cable also pretty good a piece of metal that I don't know what it's good for but we'll find out soon a micro SD card and a hex key or a hex wrench. Let's have a look at this. Oh, and something to remove your prints from the print bed. I haven't had a lot of 3D printers that came with this. I think it's a good idea. Because you don't want to take a carpet knife or something um, to the print bed, because you're only going to scratch it. Then, I suppose this will be a power brick. Um, pretty good weight. It does have this uh, strange smell to it. Well. And um, it's a GVE ACDC adapter, 12 volts, 7 amps, a lot of compliancy statements on here. It looks solid and it feels solid. And it's pretty heavy compared to others that I've seen. So all of that was good. Now, ooh, that's sweet. So as you can see, this one is silver. Um, there is there's some uh, silica gel in in here. Um, there is a stepper. Um, probably the extruder stepper up in the edge here. The material is aluminium. And if I look in here, I can actually see, I can see a small fan for the extruder. I can see a pretty standard um, X or Y axis stepper. Um, 
So comparing it to the uh, to the old version, um, the steppers have uh, become bigger, which was a very good idea. Let's see if I can get this out. All right. It looks like it looks like there's no assembly required. It's all pre-assembled. Ah, and this here is uh, where this piece of metal is going to go. Um, it appears to be a spool holder or something like that. All right. Um. It looks like this thing has actually not been handled too carefully because a lot of the package material has come off and is stuck in the back of here. Um, yeah, first of all, this thing is pretty. I mean, look at this. This is really, really a very pretty piece of machinery. This and it and it appears to be very very simple to put to work. Now let's have a look. There is a PTFE tube up here. And uh, there is a PTFE tube holder at the edge of the stepper here. Um, it's all pretty. It looks pretty solid, everything. Um, the whole setup has been improved and it has been uh, made simpler. The X and Y axis assembly is actually simpler than it was before, um, which is a good thing, uh, because the old assembly required um, some some maintenance. Uh, you had to make sure that the that the belts were always um, at optimum tension, not too much and not too little. Uh, you had to really make sure that everything um, how do you say that that there wasn't any slack and and there wasn't too much load on the moving parts if there was too much load on it or too much tension um, you would run into problems because um, it wasn't moving good enough and um, if there was slack then you had backlash but this here um, is a very a very effective design. Um, I see on the back of here. I see brass bushings um, for the for the z-axis. I can also see some brass bushings um, down where the uh, where the um, x or y-axis table is, and there are brass bushings um, on the other axis. So simple technology, but that should suffice and of course uh, brass bushings mean that you're gonna have to keep this thing really really clean and well lubricated all through its life because if you don't then uh, its life won't be too long okay this PTFE tube um, is a little bit long for my taste I'm probably gonna shorten this a bit but um, once again, that's just how I feel about it. All right. I'm going to put this together in a few minutes, So, uh, but let's look at it first. Um, this is where the SD card goes. There's a uh, an, an indicator light. Um, this here is where the, where the um, 
USB connection is. What I like about it, there's a power switch on the back of it. Um, this is where the where the power cord, um, the power adapter goes in. There's nothing else on here. Um, very simple design. Oh, there's a there's a fan at the bottom of it. Um, yep, there's a fan in here. So. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's attach this. So, I, I suppose it should be over here. Oh, well, I wouldn't take too much off here. Um, you want to keep this PTFE tube um, pretty short because um, the shorter the tube is and the, the less uh, flex all the material in the PTFE tube has, um, the less issue you're going to have with, with oozing and uh, you can go with much smaller retraction values on the extruder. So um, let's try to optimize on that. On the other hand, you do not want to have um, a small radius on the turn of the PTFE tube because um, that is going to cause friction. So let's, I'll just take about five to six centimeters off here. Clean this up and make it nice and shiny. Push it in here. Done! That was the whole setup. This is... I mean the other printer was easy to put together too, but you still had to mount the uh, stepper on the side. This is all so simple. And I think you can see it. From here, uh, this here is um, one of the NEMA type steppers. It's not one of the small ones. Um, it's all very, it's a very nice design. It's really very nice. Um, no acrylic, but aluminium. So, for now this is it. This was the unboxing. I'm now going to um, read up on the information that I can find out about it. I'm going to find out what type of um, uh, G-code it accepts and uh, what type of a software it needs, what type of slicer, if it's a repeteer type of printer or if uh, if it's a sailfish type that needs different software to talk to it. Um, all these things, I'm going to figure them out. I'm going to leave you with this beautiful image of this little printer. And uh, I really, really, I'm really giddy to find out how this thing performs. Thanks for watching and bye bye.